That is why you have to understand that the moment you got born again, your destiny was already prepared by God. Your glorious tomorrow was already prepared by God. But then, for you to get into it, it is going to take the workings of His power upon your life. That is why I have always said, and I will keep saying, that Christianity is not just coming to church. Yes, it's good you come to church, but then you only come to church to receive light, to do what you are supposed to do, to, in order to become that person, in order to move on, in order to break through, in order to manifest your nature, which is more than a conqueror. It is in the church that you are enlightened, that you are taught by the Spirit of God, and then you grow by the knowledge to become that man who is able to break through the obstacles and overcome the enemies and the, the opposition and break the resistance of the devil to reach where God says you have to reach. And when you reach there, you are you 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 are enjoying the blessings and God is glorified. That is why God wants to empower you for you to read there so that his name will be glorified. So that your life will prove to the world that the Bible is true. So that your life will tell the unbeliever out there that it is true that Jesus died and rose again and he gave us power. You know, so these are some of the reasons why you have to, you have to desire to be empowered. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, so without empowerment, Christianity is a burden. That's the truth. Without empowerment, Christianity is a burden. There are a lot of people today that they know and they know that they are supposed to be in the church, but they are home. Why? Because they are trying to follow God in the flesh. So it is always hard. The power to follow is not on them. So they struggle to follow God. Even going to church is, is a struggle. But when the power of God is upon you, Sunday you, you can't even sleep up to say say before Cecil, you are, you are already up on your feet, praising God and having fellowship with him, asking God what you are expecting on Mount Zion. As you, can. you are spiritually prepared to appear before God on Mount Zion. But people, that, that power is, is, is not upon people, a lot of people. So even coming to church, coming to Mount Zion, it's a struggle. They, they, they will sleep and sleep and sleep and he knows uh, church begins at 10 a.m. And, and at 9.30 he just jump out of bed. Oh, it's already 9.30. He rides to the bathroom, uh, brush the teeth, put on, and rush to church and come and sit down. So he came in the flesh, sitting down. And the Bible says the flesh cannot receive anything of the spirit. So he comes into the church, even if Jesus comes to preach physically, Jesus comes to start them preach physically, he won't receive anything. And he will get back and go the same. So because he's not having an encounter with the Spirit of God, he's not receiving anything. Church going becomes a burden. You understand? Like um, uh, our father, Pastor Dika said, he said, when the joy of going to church is not in there, and you go, the place becomes your religious abode. You only go there religiously. Because the joy, the zeal of going to his house is not there. Like David said, the zeal of the Lord has consumed me. The, he said, the zeal of the house of the Lord has consumed me. The joy of appearing on Mount Zion. You know, but with a lot of people, it is not like that. It's a struggle. It's a pressure. If you, I mean, they are, they are coming because, you know, you don't come after the church, uh, pastor or some of the leaders are going to be calling you and asking you and, you know, you wouldn't know what to say, so you let me go. And then he comes here religiously. I know nobody is here like that in Jesus' name. You know, but this has been the reason why people struggle. Because they lack the power to follow. They lack the power to follow. So understand that it is the power of God that gives you identity. It is the power of God. It is the power of God. It is the power of God. So that means that even though you are by redemption a miracle worker, by redemption you are a miracle worker, but your identity never becomes a reality until the Holy Ghost comes upon you, until the power comes upon you. No, Jesus, by 
by by divine plan came as a savior but until he was empowered he couldn't fulfill that you understand i mean his his birth was foretold thou shalt give birth to a son and thou shalt call his name emmanuel because god has come to be with man and uh you know his name is jesus christ uh, christ means the anointed one you know jesus the savior of the world that was his mission but until he grew up and the power came upon him he could not fulfill that mission so we have to come to understand that it is all about the power of god upon our life all about the power of god that will make us become the people that God wants us to become. But this is it. Power doesn't just drop on us. Now, this is where a lot of people are having problem. Power does not just drop on us. There is work to do to be empowered. Power does not just drop on us. There is work to do to be empowered. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And if you really desire to be empowered, then you will take time to know what you have to do to be empowered. Because going to church does not empower you. If that is the case, then nobody will have to lay hands on anybody again. Going to church does not empower you. There is what you consciously do with all your heart to be empowered by God to be empowered by God. And if you really desire to be empowered, you will take time to know what it takes to be empowered. Because the proof of your desire is in your pursuit. If you desire something, you pursue it. That is the proof of desire. And so you cannot say, oh, yeah, I want the power of God. And you, 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 you are not doing anything about it, even coming to church to receive the word that will enlighten you to know what you have to do. You won't even come. And you sit down and say, oh, I, I desire to be empowered. No, the desire is not there. You are just saying it. But the desire is not there. But if I were you, I would determine that whatever it takes, I want to be empowered. Because I, I, I want the fame of me to spread abroad. I want to be so unique in God that people will just look at me and, and, and they will just praise God. Even unbelievers will look at me and say, look, if I want to have peace, let me follow this guy. If, if I want to, to succeed, let me follow this guy. If I want to be free from the devil, let me follow this guy. I mean, you, the power of God is on you, so you become so unique. You understand? And so you, you, you will determine that, look, I am going to pay whatever price I have to pay. I'm not going to let anything influence me. I'm not going to let anything stand in my way. I'm not even going to look at people in the church because it's not everybody in the church that desires to be empowered. You understand? That is why people have sat in the church 10, 15, 20, 30. We have people that have been sitting in church for 40 years and yet everything we have to lay hands on them. Everything they, they have. I mean, there is nothing wrong with laying hands on um, people to, be, to receive miracles or healing. But let me tell you, that one is for babies. Those, the novice, those that have just gotten born again, they are those that scripturally speaking, we have to do that. But if you are in the church, five years, 10 years, 15, 20, 25, 30, and everything you have to run for has to be laid on you. You are a spiritual dwarf. You are not growing. Something is seriously wrong with you. It is just like you give birth to your son or your daughter. And are they, I mean, he is by age. He or she is 50 years. But then when he's standing there, it's like he's three years. Now, do you need any prophet to tell you there's something wrong with that child? You understand? So when you, you, you somebody look at your child and say, oh, oh how old is he, four years? And he say, uh, well, uh, you see that you are not even able to mention the 